Hello, we are Coping Life Talk and I'm Dr. Lydia Istomina. Welcome. We are always happy when you join us and especially today we will host our very special guest, Ario Falakro. And his topic is very important for, um, for any time and for any um, age that you are in uh, and any life stage. Am I right, Ario? And of course, I introduce to you our regular uh, co-host, Scott Kiddle. Hi, Scott. So, Ario, the way we work is we always um, ask our guest to introduce himself or herself. Because this way, people will hear who you are firsthand. And then we will proceed with our conversation. We are just like all together in our living room hosting you, Ario. Welcome to Coping Life Talk. You did? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, as you know, my, my name is Ario. I've been uh, studied architecture for uh, all my life. And uh, so my passion was creating a living space that uh, speaks to people and gives them the comfort they are looking for. Um, within the last um, five years, I can say, I started a new journey in my life that took me to more spirituality uh, and then how I can bring uh, uh, a spiritual life to um, our living space. Uh, so that took me to uh, uh, a lot of thinking and taking so many uh, courses or as well as taking uh, personal uh, development uh, uh, courses or we can say um, coaches that helped me to uh gather my thoughts over working of, of 30 35 years with uh different people from different walk of life and uh gather the information that it, it was in my head and i eventually put them together to a, a, in a book so i can say i'm an architectural designer i'm an author and i'm an inventor as well so that is the the brief introduction uh, that is a wonderful introduction, and as I know that you, uh, your book became a bestseller. Congratulations yeah. Yeah. with that. Yes, yeah. Scott, this is uh, who we are hosting today. Uh, this is impressive. And uh, first of all, the topic. I have a question. How did you come up with that um, idea and this uh, vision that you need to work on that? Of course, you are the architect, correct? Yes. But also, what I hear, you talk about health begins from within. So that's my that's so deep. And then you connect to that, the living space. So how did you come up with this vision? Why it is so important? Um, I have to start from, again, five years ago. Uh, before, when I was starting uh, this journey, I was always thinking about how I can make my design more, uh, or my helping my clients to achieve better result because everybody can design a box or everybody can design a building but how this building can contain a personal memories how our energy our personal energy can affect on uh, that place uh, these are the things that I've never been taught in in school I mean on, in a school uh, they call they say architecture is combination of art and technology so how you can basically uh, make uh, a building beautiful and functional but what over the years I found out there's more than that there's like how because we are human being as uh, uh, we have our psychology is important in our uh, production in our daily life uh, in our mental health so I brought psychology to the, the occasion and make it Will work together to bring a uh, better result to uh, my uh, clients. So, human beings are basically we we are taking food and we are, where we are, what we eat, what we think. It gives back to our uh, our life. We are what we eat. We are what we think. Our mindset is important in terms of how we can give result in our lifestyle. So, what other aspect of it can affect on our mindset and our life is the space that we live in, our home, 
our workplace and how we can make those the elements that is exist in our uh, living space bring it back to us to make it uh, to give us a better result it give us a a, a, a better rea reflect of ourself so if you check you know everybody can make a decoration and make a, a place beautiful but only way that that place can be more comfortable if it is designed for you designed based on your ambitions designed based on your um, uh, comfort zone and how we can find that comfort zone how we can find your ambition is when we find who you are in first place and the only person can find out who you are is first yourself you gotta find who you are in first place how you feel about your life and then a designer can help you if you don't know who you are if you don't know uh, what is your comfort zone nobody can help you and that's that's very true but also when i looked at uh, all your whole portfolio and your website and your video uh, it is interesting that you also lead it toward the um, kind of a, not the last stage of life but when people are preparing for uh, an independent living and that's what your book is about correct so i think it is very significant that uh, when you say a person only um, this man or this woman know who they are and that's what the place as i hear should reflect who they are but how do you learn that i visited so many houses and i saw everything and you know that beginning with the ideal space uh, lots of air lots of light and you can sense it's a very healthy spiritual house spirit spiritual environment but then you enter another house and it's clutter and it's a uh, dust and uh, just people don't know how to sort things out around them so where do you start because not everybody we, we need to be realistic can build a house of their dream right uh, and it, yeah and I'm sure we will refer people to you but where do you start when you come to the house and how do you even sense that something needs to um, not just change sometimes it's obvious but simply that uh, a person maybe does not even know who they are then how do you work with people like that that's actually um, a very good question uh, that is beyond uh, an architect or an interior designer's job. That is where I learned that how to become a life coach as well. I, even though I don't practice that, but I help my client to uh, find deep down what their their desire. Uh, instead of just thinking, okay, you want a house or you want a uh, your condo, you want a, 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 your workplace to look good. Um, I did this, I do this one I did that before but whatever I've done before it was for somebody else what I can find your comfort zone or what I can find your ambitions first of all I my, I, my questions gonna ask for for my client is what is makes them happy what is gonna make them happy in the future it might be difficult to answer for many questions but if you deep down find your goals what is your goal in your life what is your ambition in your life you write it down then we i help you with uh organizing your mind so then we can uh prioritize your needs based on that then when it comes to me then i basically combine four elements that i call in my in my book uh, which is uh, light and and color uh, air uh, shapes and sound i mix all together with the the the, the data that i got gathered from you and put them together to create a, a, a piece of art for yourself see when an artist put objects each object by itself may not have any value but the composition of each object a frame a color uh, a, a picture um uh, you know sound that or the music that you play in the background the lighting uh, all these little details when you combine them together will make 
a comfortable space for you, for you that it raises your energy, your inner energy, rather than drowning your energy. So w what makes a person more productive in his uh, or her workplace or in the family that they live in is the energy that exists in that environment. And that uh, environment reflects the energy of the behalf in, within. So that's why I say you, our mental health, our uh, physical health, it starts with, uh, with us. If we don't know how we expect from our life, we cannot get a better result from life. So I, I noticed on your website that you have like 928 projects completed. Um, something tells me just based on uh, your answer to Dr. Lydia's question, there were there probably have been some prospective customers that you've had to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't help you find who you are. That's, that's a piece of work you'll have to do yourself. So, so for, for starters, I'm thinking you probably had to, to pass some folks off some prospective customers off to other designers. But uh, 928, that's a lot of projects. How, how do you, uh, how do you select who you're going to work with? Most architects and designers that I uh, came up with uh, or I had uh, the chance of conversation with, they have very, I mean, I was like that as well. I made my mind that I'm, this is my style, but this is, I'm going to start uh, uh, design like modern homes all my life and all that kind of things. But eventually I found out, okay, this is not my ego that I'm trying to give a service to a client. It, it's it's not that I am designing a place for my uh, happiness. Uh, it makes me uh, proud that I designed this place. It is my clients that is my priority for me. That who, what kind of environment I'm gonna uh, design for them that makes it makes them happy. You can you know some people are you know like. Uh, uh, West Coast, you know, some people like, you know, traditional, some, I mean, I'm not that crazy about uh, traditionals because the, the details that is involved, it might not be under my uh, uh, scope of attention or work. So, uh, but uh, I don't bond myself with styles that uh, are available. I try to um, Educate my clients first. Like for example, a client I had well, had a, a house, a, a property right by the water in the in, by the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and they wanted to design something uh, very uh, detail oriented, which was uh, basically sent uh, as, uh, more more like a um, mountainish style or or more like a, 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 a rancher style. Uh, the reason that I was rejecting them or trying to educate them to not to, to use that is because of the, it was nothing to do with the psychology. It's just uh, uh, pure physics because the salt water from the, the ocean eventually in the long term is gonna have a negative effect. So mm -hmm. if I, I try to educate my client if they can understand the value that I'm offering, that's fine. If not, then um, I'm not gonna design something or put my name on something that I cannot support. That uh, I have to. I'm. I have responsibility to to uh, my work ethic as well as to uh, the universe. Uh, I cannot offer a service that is not uh, that I cannot believe on it so it it's combination of physics combination of mentality combination of health all together or even feng shui like for example um, uh, uh, eastern culture Chinese culture believes on, uh, on and, uh, feng shui and I studied deep down what is this about and I found out there's a lot of physics involved with that there's a lot of logic is involved with that that really? unfortunately is not been taught properly so many of them become like a superstitious 
I don't like to get into superstitious type of it. I study every single uh, aspect of what they asking for in the design. Like for example, you know, uh, one of the simple example when you are build designing a house, your entrance and your exit door door shouldn't be aligned. The reason being, first of all, the the building styles in that era was all tall walls is not like North American style and the wind blows uh, in many time of the year so the the draft creates in the house and uh, would easily if you if you don't have a proper uh, uh, way of managing the wind the wind would blows and take the heat off of the place mm -hmm. when they take the heat off of the place uh, that time making a house warm was not cheap it was not easy it would take a lot of effort uh, for a homeowner to make the house warm so they would say they take the fortune off of your life it would take a fortune of your family so that is no this is very simple aspect of uh, one only one of the things that i, I learned in in uh, function there's a lot of things I have to answer one more question that I missed that you were talking about uh, my book is for certain age yes when I started the book uh, my my mindset was to help people over age of 50 that they are either becoming it could be 55 could be you know, depends on how what uh, uh, stage of life you have we are in uh, some people are thinking of either uh, becoming uh, independent or they're 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 losing their partner or they're either they become empty nesters or they have a ment uh, physical uh, issues either in the near future or in the, uh, in the long term so how we can change our living space to make it more comfortable for us is not only physical so physical aspect is how we can make our uh, uh, living space much more uh, suitable for our age and that uh, you know when we get older our our senses are not sharp as uh, it used to be when we were younger so how we can physically make those uh, uh, adjustment in our house the same like for example when you have a baby in your house immediately you make it your your house uh, or your home childproof so how we can make our home age proof when we get a little bit older and it is not you don't have to be 80 years old to get to that point it starts from the age of 50 because when you have a better uh, comfortable in terms of physical comfort uh, house our mindset is more comfortable and it's more sharper it is more uh, we have we gain more confidence as a result of having that confidence in, in early ages uh, we have we will have a better healthier uh, physical body when we get older one of the things that it makes people um, earlier uh, physically uh, ill is because of their mindset is not sharp Are we, are you, are you are muted. That, I muted myself. Um, but I hear that people should not wait until they become eight years old. And I agree with you so much. But also, what is appropriate age to start? To be honest with you, uh, Dr. Lydia, um, after we experienced COVID uh, and uh, the side effect of uh, the Band-Aids and the social distancing it's it's so damaging that uh this is actually calling for every age now i mean we have to think really uh deep about or more 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 serious about how we can make our living space much more uh appropriate for our, our age or our life like for example when you see a, a, a teenager uh, then they have full of energy. You can see their their rooms full of 
posters either depends on what they are if in the sports in basketball everything is in basketball if they're uh, i don't know a, a band they're just all musician all that kind of things ario speed wagon <laughs> <laughs> so we have to bring that teenager back in our life it doesn't matter which age we are so over the years our priorities changes over the years our interests changes our achievements are much greater. Minimum thing I can we can do is appreciate or uh, show that uh, uh, that achievements in our living space. So when we are socializing with anybody or when we have somebody around, uh, they can see our achievements. They can see our uh, uh, our expression of our, our feelings and uh, they can be a, an icebreaker to start a, a good conversation like i see uh, Dr. Lydia you have calm back the mm. word calm back in your background so i can feel that what that brings up to me uh, what kind of personality you are you have so these are little details that it helps you whenever you're looking at that you know that picture or that object or whatever it is it reflects to you as well as you're reminding of you who you are and we are not always in the the hundred percent of our quality of life there are times that we're down i've been there everybody's been there either because of news that we listen or something happened in our family but we always need a boost that help us to get back to the normality because we cannot stay in a, a low energy for so long because when you stay in the low energy the room is gonna fill with that low energy and that basically comes back to us and this time of being in the low energy is gonna extend so we have to take off the low energy and be, put, put ourselves back to the who we are as as individual and enjoy our our happiness I have a question. That's a that's an interesting uh, kind of edge. When you say that you need a boost, because so many of uh, people, you're right, during COVID, um, were down, depressed, did not. Uh, maybe many of them walked, of course, but in the beginning it was so confusing that people did not uh, even feel safe to walk. So, um, but how do you prepare that boost? So, do you have a room in the house that you originally designed as a, like a boost? room or uh, like you know, uh, energy giving room or when you find yourself in this low stage then you have to recreate and redesign something in the house but again if you are depressed and probably that will be the last thing you have in your mind so how do you prepare in advance since i see that your whole approach is to be prepared in advance to something in life that you're not expecting am i right is in the, in the, it depends on the individuals. Everybody is different. Uh, myself, I keep myself active. Every morning I go for a walk or run. Regardless of the weather, sunshine, rain or shine, frost, uh, that is not only helping me be sh keep myself sharp in physical body, but even mentally. Uh, that time that is spent in the nature, it's amazing it's the nature talks to me i get messages from universe as a matter of fact uh, the book that i wrote what came to me during the, my my walk i had <coughs> somebody and even like even blogs i have to write every uh, week or so i have to write a blog so that ideas come to me during the during my, my walk so uh if you are able uh, to have physical activity it is very important uh I know that they, we've been locked down for so long, but it's good to go out. <laughs> Let's enjoy the, the nature as much as you can. Uh, but having a room in your uh, that speaks to you in your in your place in your home, that would be. Uh, some people I, I remember I designed a, a house for a Vietnamese uh, family that they wanted to have a meditation room. It was a small room, but they wanted to have a prayer room small place they all the uh, it could serve everybody everybody in the family uh depends on 
who you are, uh, how, what do you pray for, and how you enjoy your life, we design accordingly. I cannot give you, give uh, one example for every uh, solution. It's not like a medicine, a tunnel that, that can help everybody <laughs> to calm down. Uh, it, it is a custom design. Uh, sometimes a beautiful kitchen, like uh, for uh, people who are who love cooking. Uh, the way that I designed that the kitchen for them, it's just that gives them the comfort. If you are happy with your uh, instrument, your your mus musician, the way that you have a corner that that makes. It reminds you of the memory that you had either when you went to the concerts or you have we all had good times so those good times can remind you of uh, your your past life and take you to take you to the future life but I have a question about also uh, since you are sitting uh, in front of us and then I cannot help myself but look at the uh, what I see behind you and I think that's a perfect maybe lesson short lesson that you can give us how did you design a room like this and why so what is important in this room and what does it do to you for me I love traveling I love traveling I love socializing and unfortunately during the COVID I couldn't travel. I could not get to get together with my loved ones, my friends. So, as you see the pictures, I uh, or the videos, um, I, 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 I don't, I don't like to have to live in a in a very passive or uh, uh, static home. So, I like to make it dynamic. That the, the being dynamic could be through. A picture or as a uh, this 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 is a, a, a TV or it could be lightings you know sometimes we I design uh, homes with the uh, lightings that, that are changing colors depends on the uh, the change of your mood you can change depends on if the weather is outside is sunny you want to make it brighter you want to make it darker whatever you want so as I mentioned that four elements the air quality it's very important for us to have a good air quality. The objects, the things that is reminds me, I love copper because of the antibacterial uh, 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 property that it has. I like I like the artwork. I like C. It's all the objects you see is all related to C. I like music, and this one, of course, is related to my work. This is a printer, a brother, a big printer, and yeah, I mean, and that's my book. It reminds me of one of my achievements that I had. So, uh, again, we go, what I help you out with first is find, find out what makes you happy. If it's memories of your uh, friends, memories of your uh, uh, kids, memories of the time that you were in the college, Bring those on ups and find out, find out what was that memories that made you happy, and replicate that. There are small objects that you can get together and put together. It's either yourself or get the help of um, a, a designer. Uh, of course, a designer cannot help you to find who you are. That's the most important help that you can do for yourself is first of all to find who you are. Like I have one of the things that you don't see is it's, it's a soap, but it's aromatic soap. And then I come to the room, this aromatic soap, it just lifts my my uh, spirit. So these are all, as I said, air, air quality. It cannot, it's, it's, it's not just how uh, air circulated my house or it's warm or something like this. It's aroma can be a, a part of the whole home design so um it's fascinating thank you and thank you for giving us a tour around your room so um even the small things which is not a small thing um aroma but my question is so you mentioned s small things to put them out that who you are but that leads some people to this sort of clutter because it gets out of control so much stuff out that maybe not even kind of systematic but simply because it means something so what will be your advice if for example i have so many important and beautiful things that energize me and i will display them all 
um, is it the system in that maybe I should uh, display um, like a few at a time and then store them to get refreshed so could you speak a little on that that is a very good question uh, if you have the ability if you have the storage because uh, especially women have the uh, the the feeling that they get bored of some objects and they want to refresh uh, there's different <laughs> men and women so uh, if um, you have the ability to store some of the items of course you can refresh it once in a while depends on the mood depends on the seasons depends on the situation and uh, you know and it's good to have uh, new objects once in a while uh, because you know, there are things that we see and there are things that there as a matter of fact, there's more things that we don't see by our eyes than there are, exist around us. And those items, they're not items, they're energy. There's like electromagnetic energy or the, the magnetic, magnetic energy is around us. So those items or those energies are around us are reflecting back to us. And they are even stick on a room stick on a an object so when you're changing the place one to other items you're bringing new energy you're bringing different energy so you just have to reflect your energy back to them to give to bring those positive energy to you so imagine when you had a gift first time or any gift that you get from a loved ones how a beautiful feeling was for yourself try to feel that way that every time that you change objects in your room you're bringing a new gift for yourself so this uh, positive energies that makes you happy stays with you and try to extend the timing because the unfortunately the bad news that we hear from media is always overwhelming and it's always uh, uh taking over of life try to avoid that and make yourself or surround yourself with uh positive people and uh, if you can do something for somebody that can change your life do it if not don't stick the uh, negative mind at all oh my god that person is a, in a in a, in a, a pro problem if you can pray for that person that is the minimum thing you can do then do it and be live in peace that mm -hmm. you did your part so then question when you talk about you know refreshing and then uh, kind of shifting things around moving things around i have a question two questions let's start with the first one uh, first of all since we talk about replacing sort of the scenario interior right mm -hmm. so um i grew up with my uh, with a mother my mother loved moving furniture and uh, we grew up with that and so i move furniture so often scott is my husband so he's here he knows that um he how frequently i try to move things around my daughter is the same way so it's like it became engraved in our psyche that we need to refresh um, our surrounding and maybe it started because in, I'm from Russia, and so we had very small apartments, right, small houses, and um, it was necessary. It was just so tiring when things are the same way. So, and I come into America, our house is big, but I do the same thing. So, uh, how would you advise? Uh, or maybe what is your insight on people who move furniture? Is it reasonable? How often should they do that to um, to replace the scenario? And does it help with energy? See, um, I don't hundred percent agree with moving and uh, moving uh, furniture. Why? Because uh, what, right now when I'm designing a house, I design everything in a, such a logic that uh, oh. everything has has to have its place okay you, yeah. you know especially nowadays i mean uh you know when you have a big house you might be able even in a bigger house you know when i design a great room or I design a living room or i design a bedroom everything has to have its the right place even the I direction see. for example my bed i try my best to have it toward to north south direction of uh, earth 
that because of the the the, the way of uh, magnetic energy moving yeah, yeah. moving on yeah. so it doesn't interfere with your body uh, uh, direction so it, the reason that we try to move things around is because we want to this is a little bit deeper conversation see 96 percent of 95 to 96 percent of our daily activity happens through our subconscious mind mm. our conscious mind is only using four to five percent and it's good to increase that conscious mind daily activities like taking your breakfast driving from one spot to other spot these are all every day we do the, the same thing and over and we don't really think about it things that we think about it okay what about i eat a different type of breakfast this morning not the same thing that i've been eating all day long so when you're trying to change your furniture you're trying to use your um, conscious mind to activate things that you were doing every day make it different so you can your brain can be healthier you can brain your brain can be you know as a matter of fact it is very important to find a way that you that your daily activity uses more of your conscious mind because it avoids uh, mental diseases uh, mental health problems like uh, dementia alzheimer's disease so the more you're using your conscious mind you think deeply about daily activities like for example you're checking out travel when you go a travel to go into a new place everything is different so as a result your brain is getting more uh, act, uh, your your conscious mind active faster and more so as a result your brain is working better so i personally prefer changing the decoration through colors through lights through uh different uh aspects rather than relocating furnitures because sometimes it doesn't really give you any better results either i understand the logic behind changing the furniture but you can achieve that uh, uh, uh positive result through different actions thank you i will absolutely um, tell my daughter to watch it tonight uh, <laughs> so question i have is that um, you mentioned that the bad should be oriented uh, north to south? Where does the hat should be north or south? North south direction, not west east. Or so south. the hat, because that that was uh, that got my attention because some time ago I've read a long time ago uh, because I was interested in all this um, feng shui and oriental you know approach so that uh, somewhere and maybe I'm wrong. Correct me that the head should face um, head east. And maybe because it's a collective like, you know, altar and then east, everything goes east. It stays north south, but your face could look at east. That oh, could be, that could be the, the maybe the, that when you when you when you wake up, you see the the morning sun. You know, I've not I noticed that feng shui again is comes back to where you are, where you live, and what what is the situation. So it's not. Uh, a guidebook that can apply for everybody and everywhere it is a very delicate knowledge uh, and the wisdom that has to be uh, taken care of by the 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 right people who know know the the logic because mm -hmm. when you think of uh, uh, superstitious then become uh, uh, useless Hmm. Yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And also, you see, Scott, now we're in danger. We have to move. <laughs> we have to move our bedroom around because our bed is located directed toward east. So now we have to put it toward north. That's <laughs> all interesting. But I will promise I will sleep facing east. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, might be, there might be some uh, some things that you can do. Like for example, my wife. Uh, used to have bed to our to east to west and she noticed that she has um uh you know not a very comfortable sleep so she came up with this idea i don't know how how it works what does she do is she uh puts a a, a jar or i'm sorry a bowl 
a crystal ball full of water and salt and put it in a, some corner of the, the house. If her energy is low, this salt crystallizes and comes out of the, the bowl. And if she's calm, the water stays calm. So mm -hmm. when after, uh, you know, the, the, the next day when the, that happens, uh, she, she takes the ball without touching the salt, making sure that she doesn't touch the salt. She drains it and put it again every night. So that is what she found. I don't know where she got it from, but there's so, as I said again, there's so much out, out there that we can't see with our eyes than what exactly exists as uh, what we see it from our eyes. That's absolutely fascinating. So we will try that too. Uh, but <laughs> remember, I had two questions. So the second question was, uh, what if our spouses have different um, values? And for example, if one of the spouses uh, is a collector, and collects everything and it could be anything it could be um, collections of dolls it could be uh, too many books it could be too much furniture right uh, or too much electronics uh, whatever it is but or shoes like women have like you know, 500 pairs of shoes so how do you coach your customers your clients when you see that tendency that one of them and they do not agree on that so does it require more storage space in the house H how would you advise to a couple who has too much stuff collected compromise mm -hmm. marriage is the uh, basically the compromise compromising from either side if you cannot compromise uh, the life is not going to be easy and uh, that is uh, beyond uh, home design first of all if you cannot compromise what is ha happening in your personal life it's going to be hard to live but anyhow the same way that you ask that how we can have when we have too much stuff how we can refresh it the same thing first of all if you can use either storage spaces and bring up valuables that you can uh, uh, show this space everybody has to have their own space okay if you don't like what i do at least give me one corner i want this corner for myself i want to do things for myself whatever i want and then you uh, manage your priorities which one of these objects you like first you can put it and refresh it i personally like used to like uh, antiques a lot a lot mm -hmm. but my wife isn't doesn't like it so she uh she says i don't want old energy in my life so i compromised i have some stuff here and there but it's my storage um <laughs> once in a while i go take a look but you know it's not that in my face in her face i don't bother her so it's in everybody that has their own issues in their life so you gotta find the right solution for it so, uh, a question you mentioned your wife and uh, the the, the crystal bowl, I think I, I understood. A container. Uh, it could be Pyrex. It could be... Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so it, it reminded me of that uh, Japanese um, scientist, pseudo-scientist Imoto. Do you, do you remember him? He, he believed that, um, that the, the yes. structure of water molecules could be, could yeah. be impacted by human consciousness. So... Was was your wife seeing a, a connection in some way between her her energy levels and the condition of of, of the water? Um, I don't know about that. I know this is more than. I mean, of course, ninety five percent of our body it contains water, right? Yes. And it depends on what water we drink and then how the, the environment we are. It really affects, and you you see how water can be in a different shapes and. Uh, you know quality um here i guess it's more crystallization of salt rather than just water I'm and sure. how, how what energy affects on the salt that maybe drains the the water through the air 
so this is this is very complicated physical conversation that is beyond my understanding but i saw myself many times as a matter of fact my son sometimes practices as well uh, there are times that the water like for example she puts in my room the water stays like that because i do a lot of meditation mm -hmm. uh, and I can feel whenever she is in not a good mood. For example, this morning she was not very really good mood. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to, you know, stay away when she's in a good. She's not in a good mood. I try to calm. I try calm her down as much as possible. But I see the energy is so great that I cannot overcome that uh, negativity. Then I stay away. That it does not only transfer to me, but even escalates for. For the uh, issues, <laughs> Wait, I I'm, gonna, that. <laughs> I'm releasing so many personal information now. <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's what I like our podcast because they're very informal, very casual, and people feel like they are visiting us at home. Thank you for this. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to have a little more personal information and people develop their trust to us. A question I have, you mentioned at one point prayer. Yeah. Um, and some, you know, many people pray at home. Do you think that prayer has this power to um, increase energy in the house? And um, decrease the presence of negativity and kind of dark forces. How do you use it in your work? Um, I can say prayer is talking to the God, to, to God and to universe. And meditation is when God talks to you. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand. We got to learn how to pray. Prayer is not just coming and asking for help. The ritual of prayer is a whole lot more. First, we got to appreciate for what we have, the, the gratitude. If it was not because of the universe, our existing was not available. The health we have, we got to gratitude for what we have first, things that around us, the family we have, the the the, the the government, uh, hopefully they, they could be better, but, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the society we live around, like people we talk to, every single thing, this gratitude is number one column of a prayer. And then that brings you to the peace that you require to start getting a conversation, getting a mental uh, connection with ether, with it, with universe with God with being that you are expecting to be connected to the best case scenario of prayer is when you're with along with other people because the more energy raises and it creates a better bigger energy and it distributes back to everybody but if you cannot regardless of you're doing it in a in a in a, uh, in a group of people or alone prayer is a time that the combination of talking to, the, to God and coming back could be either a meditation because there is a time that you're releasing energy and that is where you can you have to get it back and that is can be as part of your meditation so if you want to uh, spend time best time that you can do would be here in the morning you just wake up and before we sleep there's a lot of logics uh, in terms of physical and uh, uh, metaphysical logics behind prayer and all the religious uh, rituals that has been uh, established that we are doing without knowing them there's uh, uh, these all effects on our uh, personal day-to-day -day life and the more you ask for the more you get God is within us the universe is within us you just have to knock the door knock the door that it, it, it can be open either whoever you are believing to whoever you are praying for either is Jesus is Allah is uh, Buddha or whoever it is 
there is a common message they're all sending and this common messages comes from uh, the same thing as i mentioned for about uh, uh feng shui that has a logic behind the same thing for religions there's a com commonality in terms of phys uh, physical commonality and physical commonality that, that is exist so the more you um put yourself vulnerable and create that moments that you want to uh, connect with uh, uh, the power above the more you can uh, get result back in your life well i wanted to ask the question i and i usually ask this question of, of all of our guests but uh, the question is around uh, can you share an example of one of your greatest successes and I, I think I wanted to uh, put that, uh, kind of frame that with, uh, t tell us about someone who, who has received your services and uh, what you were able to help create in their home really had um, a significant impact on the quality of their spiritual health, mental health, physical health, any of the above. See, um, because of the type of work that I did, I helped uh, people with uh, multi-million dollar homes as well as homes as the size of a garage. Uh, we call it Lane Bay Homes or ADU here, there in the US. Uh, basically, um, you can build a small uh, residential unit in your yard and they rent it out. One of the thing I can, one of the things that I can remember was I had a client who was a young fellow and uh, he wanted to build a house for himself, his uh, parents and his in-laws. Mm -hmm. So they were basically collecting money from three generations or two generations, or actually it would be three generations anyway, because of their kids as well, but collecting money from uh, three families so they could live together in one place and uh, that they were very uh, restricted on on feng shui but the new family the, the younger family they did it so i had to combine three uh, different tastes wow. traditions and modernism so how to make this all work and besides that the te technology for example one of the families they said we don't want to have uh ovens the cooking facilities to be on the west wall mm -hmm. i never heard of that before <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so um how many times i have to revise my design at the end the mishmash the combination it worked out so well the client could say i cannot believe you i mean one of the things that i i, I talked to the, the 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 fellow every time he was coming to me i could feel that how pumped he was that he didn't he disliked the design and everything and i came to him you know what i understand your feeling i understand your problem your problem is you are listening to your mom you're listening to your in-law and you have your own will and you don't know how to combine them let me help you over it uh just do not get frustrated every time that I, because the, the parents were not uh, present on on our meetings it was only the family the the young family so every time that we were designing something and they were taking to the to have consultation with uh, the, the, the the parents they came back angry so but when they when they find out that i'm there to help them i'm there to find a solution i'm not rigid minded that i say it's either my way or highway they feel comfortable and uh we worked out the design over and over and over and finally we get the the best solution for exterior look for interior look every single details on the because we all offer a, a 3d rendering as well so in that 3d rendering they can see all the colors and all the textures so at the end it will it worked out very well for helping a multi-generational home to to work for them happy thereafter 
That's impressive. I don't know how you pulled that all together. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how I don't know how uh, parents and in laws can can live together. That could be a, a, a real challenge. <laughs> and not only that, there's a laws and regulations that you have to follow that you cannot have more more than two families. But again, you have to work out some some way that it makes it happen. Interesting. Okay. In many countries, it's very, very common, and it's a tradition yeah. to take care of uh, aging parents, and so I'm not surprised, and uh, I applaud to you that you found the solution not just to build something on this money from three generations, but also to, to give people a wonderful place to live and uh, love each other and share for each other without arguing uh, what is more important and where things should be. So thank you. This is a great success story and I hope our audience our viewers today um, write notes and uh, we have your website on the bottom running but also I want to display the title again of your book that this is a very very important book because uh, it's it, I think it is important for people first of all who age for themselves to read it and start thinking how to prepare themselves for independent living and for transition, but also for children. First of all, as you said in the beginning, uh, you have to start early to start planning, but also maybe they will help their parents to downsize, to prepare for this move, and uh, they can always refer um, them to your website and uh, maybe purchase your book for them. So I think it is important for us today to, uh, to meet you, and I hope that um, we will hear from you more. Uh, do you want to wish to our viewers today something at the end, Ario? The book website is beyond-ages.com which basically uh, takes them to um, Amazon uh, either they can buy it in Spanish or English so uh, and we have audiobook as well so we'll be uh, happy to help any questions they have directly they can uh, refer to me either through my website or through that uh, beyond-ages.com uh, any questions uh, I'll be happy to help and this, I'm impressed that it is available in English, Spanish, and the audio book. So what a convenient uh, arrangement that you have the whole package. So thank you so much, Ario. We are so glad that we hosted you today. I think it is important for people to address to this podcast again and again because there are so many um, kernels of truth here. Uh, thank you, Ario. Uh, we are very, very happy to know you. And when you... When you come to Missouri, please find us and I will give you our contact information. Sure. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye